signing day has arrived. We'll take a look at the newest members of the Central Michigan football program coming up on Chippewa Rewind. Welcome into this special edition episode of Chippewa Rewind presented by the Morning Sun. I'm Adam Jackson alongside your head coach John Bonamigo. You ended your first season as the head coach of the Chippewas in December and your recruiting class is now finished up. How did it go for you? Uh, I think we've got a great class coming in. Uh, I think that uh, time will tell as any, as any year, but I'm really excited about the group of athletes and young men that have decided to commit to Central Michigan. I've learned a lot this first year. You know, at this point in time, I wasn't even head football coach. Uh, in the time that transpired from when I left college football to being back, uh, a lot of things have changed, but a lot of things have remained the same. I think what's different about recruiting now is that the process is much, much more accelerated. I mean, I'm way, we are way ahead of the game already on next year's class compared to a year ago. Uh, and the things that have changed also is the medians and how we how we contact and how we communicate with pro prospects. I mean, of a year ago at this time, I didn't have a Twitter account. Now I'm on it every single day, uh, drunk messaging kids and and you know trying to set them up, get them to come visit and those sort of things. So, uh, but the thing that hasn't changed is it's still a personnel business. Uh, it's still a relationship business. You're building relationships. You're selling your product, which in our case is CMU at the university and our football program. And it's always easy to sell something that you believe in. I have a tremendous amount of faith in our class and I feel like our, our football program and our university are top, sell, top shelf and it's uh, very easy to sell it. All right, let's take a look at this year's recruiting class. We'll start with the quarterback position and Tommy Lazaro is a kid that came on a little bit earlier on. Yeah, Tommy's already on campus, uh, junior college prospect from uh, out in Dodge City, Kansas, originally from Colorado Springs, played his high school football out there, uh, won two state championships, uh, won a conference championship with, uh, at the junior college level. He's a big, strong kid, accurate thrower, and um, we're really happy to have him. He'll. Uh, you know, he's going to add really a lot of depth right away uh, and we'll have a chance to compete for the backup spot behind Cooper this fall. Next quarterback you have, Tony Poljan, comes from the same high school that Cooper Rush came yep, from. Right out of Lansing Catholic. Uh, Tony's also um, the son of a, one of my teammates here, uh, Rick Poljan. Uh, so there was CMU blood in the family, and in the end, I think it really made a big difference. Very, very, very highly recruited player. Uh, a lot of Power Five interests, had offers from Michigan State, uh, uh, Minnesota, uh, Nebraska, Oklahoma State, Iowa State, uh, as well as all the MAC schools. Uh, dual threat quarterback, big kid. Uh, on his official visit, we measured him in at 6'6 six, six and 7'8 and 240 pounds. Uh, also a Division I basketball recruit. Uh, you know, just a big, strong, athletic, rangy kid who can throw the ball and can beat you with his feet as well. Uh, we're really excited about Tony. Next quarterback you got is from Fort Thomas, Kentucky, and that's uh, Austin Herget. Uh, yeah, Austin's a kid that we got a chance to evaluate early, was in our camp, really won out on, uh, you know, on, on, on the competition battle. We had uh, several of the top quarterbacks in our camps and got a chance to get uh, you know, live evaluations on him. And Austin's a kid that really won out in that competition, uh, ranked as one of the top 30 players in his state. Uh, same uh, high school as Gino Gadouli. And uh, again, a, a big, strong kid that can uh, really throw the football, pro-style quarterback. In. We're excited about his future as well. Next up, let's take a look at the running backs, and we'll start with Jonathan Ward. Uh, Jonathan Ward, uh, two words, tremendous athlete. Um, broke, his, broke the career rushing record or rushing yardage record at his high school. Uh, 
led his team to a state championship. And uh, on the week of his official visit, we had a fight in the staff room between our offense and defensive coaches in terms of where he was going to play. Uh, you know, he could easily project at uh, wide receiver, defensive back, and, you know, obviously running back. Uh, he's a great kid, great family, and, uh, you know, future's bright for him, and we're really happy he chose to be a Chippewa. Do you get the last say on where the kid gets to play at? Yeah, absolutely. Ultimately, a lot of it's down to him, and it's where he can help the team the fastest. And, you know, Jonathan's just the type of versatile athlete that uh, has the skills to contribute or, you know, come in and play at a lot of different positions. Next running back is Kumano Gawili. He's from Shelby Township. Uh, yeah, Utica High School. Kumano is an interesting story. Uh, we had a chance to get him on campus early, developed a relationship with him. Uh, committed to us early and just went out and had a, a fantastic senior year. First team all state player, big running back, uh, you know, right at six foot, 215 pounds right now, uh, give or take five pounds, maybe even closer to 220. Uh, powerful runner and uh, great kid, great student, and uh, is going to really uh, be able to contribute uh, in the very near future at the running back position. The next guy you recruited out of the backfield was from right here in Mount Pleasant. Got him as a fullback. Tell us about Hunter Buchkowski. Uh, just like the name sounds, it's, uh, it sounds tough and it is tough. Uh, Hunter's a two-way player at Mount Pleasant High School, linebacker and, and tailback. We project him as a fullback in our offense. He's a, he's a legacy. His grandfather, Don Petty, was the running back, quarterback, offensive coordinator here for Coach Dromedy for many years still lives in town and uh, it means a lot to us to have Hunter uh, in this incoming class being the fact that he's from Mount Pleasant his grandfather coached here but he's also a great athlete and he's going to be able to really bolster that fullback position. You got a lot of receivers coming back so we're able to pick up Bailey Edwards. Yeah like you said I think that entire room is coming back this year which is something that we're excited about for next fall but Bailey's a guy that has a really unique skill set and that he has length and speed. Uh, he has an outstanding pedigree. Uh, his father and older brother both played in the National Football League, uh, highly recruited, uh, all the MAC schools, even some Big Tens. And uh, he's just got that unique uh, combination of size, length, and speed uh, to make him a, a deep receiving threat anytime he's on the field and we're excited about him and his future. When we come back on Chippewa Rewind, we'll take a look at the newest members of the 2016 class on the defensive side of the ball. Stay with us. back to Chippewa Rewind. We took a look at the offensive side of the ball. Now let's take a look at the defensive side of the ball with Coach. And we're going to start with one of the most important position groups, the defensive line. Yeah, uh, this, is a, this is a position obviously highly important and probably one of the more difficult ones to recruit because the really, really good ones, the ones that are, are you know, college ready, are pretty easy to identify uh, at the high school level and they get snapped up fast. So. Uh, a lot of this is, is really projection. Uh, you're looking at body types and growth potential. Uh, and, you know, at any position you want to see production, but the ability or what you think are the abilities for that kid to grow or how he's going to develop over the course of the next several years is, is critical. First one on the list, Josh Eldridge. Yeah, Josh is a kid that we were able to get an early evaluation on. Uh, was in our junior day. Um, that's Coach Rickhamstrick's recruiting area. So uh, he had early eyes on the kid, and, and uh, we are really excited about him. He's a big body, long body. Uh, he's already 250 pounds, probably about 6'4". Uh, starts on the basketball team there. And uh, we really like his frame and his ability to, uh, to gain weight. And we, we liked his motor. I mean, he's a kid that really plays hard and uh, we're excited about Josh. 
You got a lot of kids from the Detroit area, and you went down to MLK and got another one, Leon Page. Leon Page is a kid that was highly recruited. Um, all the MAC schools, I think he had a Purdue offer as well. Uh, played for a state championship team. He's more of an edge rush type of player. We project him at a defensive end. Highly productive, uh, tenacious tackler, high motor kid, uh, great family. You know, one of the, mentioned earlier, one of my favorite things about recruiting is getting into these kids' homes and getting the chance to meet mom and dad, kind of see how they were raised and, and brought up. And, you know, that is a, a hard working blue collar family. They own a, a couple bakeries and, uh, you know, they know what hard work's all about. And, uh, that's how, that's how Leon Page plays and, and one of the reasons why we're really excited to have him. The final D lineman that CMU added was a late addition on Wednesday afternoon. Dante Cleveland is a 6'3", 245-pound recruit from Hoffman Estates, Illinois. Cleveland made 33 tackles, including eight sacks in just five games in his senior season. Coach Bonamigo likes his athleticism and says he can play multiple positions for the Chippewas. All right, so that wraps up the defensive line. Let's take a look at the defensive backfield. That's uh, a position group that you need some guys to come in and fill. Yeah, we, we really need to add depth at that position, especially, well, both positions, safety and corner. We felt like uh, we're a little thin there, uh, not from the quality of player that we have on the roster, but just even the overall depth. So that was definitely a priority, and I feel like we addressed that in this year's class. And we got a number of players that... I think they're going to play a lot of football before they leave CMU. Another guy out of Detroit as we begin with the defensive backs, DeAndre Harvey, the six foot, 161 pounder. Yeah, DeAndre is a kid, again, was an early commit to us, um, mostly MAC interest, two way player there, uh, dynamic player on offense and defense, really good hips, great top end speed and ball skills, and we're projecting him at corner. We're really happy to have him. Another guy down from the east side of the state that comes in, Jakar Jackson. And you're looking at him at safety for the Chippewas. Yeah, Jakar is, uh, he's my Mr. Football in this year's class. I'm, you know, I love football. I love to be around people that love football. And Jakar is a kid that, that just oozes out of him the, from the very first time you meet him. You just know that he is a guy that really, truly loves the game, studies the game. Uh, he can tell you about everybody's offense that he played. Uh, he can tell you who the best players are in, in the city, across the state. He's just, uh, he's a 24-7 nonstop football junkie. He's a, a physical player, can play down in the box, uh, and just a really great addition to this year's class. As we continue with the defensive backs, next up, Alonzo McCoy. Alonzo McCoy uh, was originally committed to Toledo. Again, they went through a coaching change. He had a change of heart. You know, Archie Collins stayed on him, uh, dynamic athlete all around. Uh, you know, you see him do a lot of different things for them, uh, whether it was, you know, as a wide receiver, as a slot receiver, as a running back, and then, of course, on defense where we're projecting him to play corner. Uh, great all-around football player with, uh, with an outstanding skill set. A lot of talent coming to the defensive side of the ball for Coach Bonamigo and the Chippewas. When we come back, we'll take a look at some of the kickers that are coming in for this special teams guru. Stay with us on Chippewa Rewind. Chippewa Rewind, we've touched on the offense, we looked at the defense, and now let's look at something you're very familiar with, the special teams. What do you look for when you're looking for that next kicker to come in and play for CMU? Well, if one thing you look for is uh, leg talent. You know, strength is something that you can't really teach, just like in, on offense or defense, speed is something that's, you can develop it, but it's, it's really hard to teach that. So, uh, you know, that's the very first thing. Then I think technique is, is uh, you know, things that you can work on. And uh, probably the most important thing that, that I look for is what's between their ears. Uh, probably the toughest thing to judge, but without question, the most important factor in a guy being able to succeed 
in uh, the high pressure world of kicking field goals or punting. Absolutely, you have to be mentally sound when you take the field. Let's take a look at Caden Keon. Yeah, Caden Keon, right from down the road here in St. Louis, got a chance to spend a lot of time with Caden. Uh, really excited about his his potential. Did all three in 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 high school. Kicked off field goals and punted. Uh, very very proficient at all three. Uh, He'll probably project more as a uh, field goal kickoff specialist just because of his body type, but uh, he was also an outstanding punter in high school as well. And got a chance to, again, spend a lot of time with him this close to campus, was at every home game, and uh, very excited about having him join our team. So that wraps up the class for the Chippewas. Coach, you've done the recruiting cycle for one full year. How satisfied are you with this year's class? I'm ex very excited about this year's class. It's a great class. We've already started on next year's class. They, they overlap, you know, this time of year when you're out, you know, for lack of a better word, babysitting your commitments. You're, you're starting to look at juniors and start to cultivate that list as well. So very, very happy with where we're at. I think uh, I learned a lot as a head coach in this first year and, you know, it pushes on, it never stops. It's a perpetual process. Okay, so the games are done right now. The recruiting has finished for now. What's next? What are you guys doing right now as well, a football program? Well, what's next has already started. You know, development, player development is such a big part of success at really any level, uh, but particularly at the college level as you bring, you know, freshmen in, kids go through their five-year uh, college experience. The time from the season end to uh, the, the following year, there's a lot of growth and development that takes place in that time fear, period. Uh, so this is a time where Jason Novak gets to, you know, really get his hands on guys and, and uh, you know, they're hard at work in the weight room and in their movement and agility uh, drills. And, and there's a lot of uh, hard work that goes into that. It's an extremely important part of the year and that will you know, it never stops, but we'll, that'll kind of come to a head right before spring break. Our players will have a week off, and then we'll come back and jump right into spring practice. All right, Coach. Well, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, before we know it, that spring game will be coming up in April pretty soon here. Sure will be. Fire up chips. Well, that'll wrap up our show. For more information on the 2016 Central Michigan recruiting class, check out cmuchippewas.com. For head coach John Bonamigo, I'm Adam Jaxa. Have a fantastic day and fire up chips.